Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you my brand new, well, I've had it since Christmas time, my brand new Fox Alien Masseter Pro CNC router engraver. I've been using it for about two, two and a half months now, just uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff that we make for Etsy that my wife sells on her Etsy account. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a link in the description below to her Etsy account because it actually is pretty awesome. What we're gonna do is, today's video is just gonna be a little quick walkthrough on the CNC itself. It's not a build, I actually did a build video but for some reason I lost all the footage and the unboxing and the build was no more. You can find those all over the internet and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a few kind of easy things that you need to go buy when you get this. If you've never done CNC before, listen, if you're an absolute pro at CNC and you have a machine that's $10,000, this is probably not the video for you. Uh, definitely respect to you guys for our the pros of these things, but I am by far not a pro. And probably people who are watching this should go watch the pros as well. They're super fun to watch. I really enjoy it. But if you just kind of want to be led by a newbie and kind of see what I did, then this video might be for you. So I'm gonna do multiple videos on this thing. We're gonna do projects. I'm gonna show you some simple projects of what to use. Enough about that. Let's go ahead and get right into it and let us let me show you, I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you some of the things that you kind of want to go buy. All right guys, so here is the actual CNC machine. It is pretty awesome. I have been using this for two, two and a half months now and it is absolutely fire. I love this thing. Super easy to use, powers up, really simple. Got the light on, uh, there's a light switch right here. You can use that. It does help seeing if you need to. This button right here is this is the emergency stop. So if you actually unbox this and it doesn't work, check your emergency stop. If you can't get it to, to connect for whatever reason, make sure that this emergency stop is released. You basically just turn it like that. It has a spring loaded. See, it's locked right now. Spin it and it'll pop up and that will allow the machine to function left, right, up, down, back and forth and so on and so forth. Again, this was super easy to build. It literally took me about 30 minutes to put together. It is very, very easy. A lot of the components are already built, they're already ready together, and you don't have to worry about like installing the motor and all of this. All of this track was already on this whole rail already. You only had to basically connect the three rails, connect the back, uh, the, the, uh, the waste board, well not the waste board, the cutting board, and so on and so forth. This right here, this is called a waste board. You need to find some kind of board that's gonna cut into so it doesn't cut into the main board here. This is a must. Now, I have it connected with these clamps, but eventually I'm gonna do the tape and glue method and we'll get into that real, real soon. You can actually see right here in all of these cuts, these are waste cuts It actually cut through the wood and a little bit deeper. If you don't have this, you're gonna ruin this board and you're gonna have to buy a new one and so on and so forth or make your own. I plan on making my own and getting rid of all of these circle clamps and whatnot and just creating one, uh, but I'm not there yet. This is just a piece of wood we're gonna test out in trial. It does not come with any bits, not even a starter bit, so you're gonna have to order some bits right away. And this is the collet. Uh, the motor takes 1 8 inch bits. You can get larger bits for this, but what you will need to purchase, new collets. So like for instance, this is the collet right here, which will go in and this accepts quarter inch bits. So this collet right here will fit inside this right here, but you can accept a quarter inch bit opposed to eighth inch bits. So that is an option. You do have to purchase these separately. I will put a link in the description if you are interested in these collets. They make all sorts of sizes. You can do different drill bits or whatnot and add those in there and they're, they're super awesome. So I did get these, but uh, I haven't used them yet. The next thing that you're gonna wanna purchase is your bit set. So here is some bits that I purchased on Amazon. Uh, they're really all eighth inch bits and this is what we're using and this is all that I've been using in in the past because I haven't upgraded yet 
to the more powerful router motor using the new motor mount. We're gonna do this on a separate video. Today's video does not include installing this. What you're gonna to wanna to do is purchase yourself some of these bits, that way you can start your projects. And these were pretty inexpensive. I think these were like 25, 30 bucks, something like that, not much. I'll put a link in the description below for these bits as well. Uh, it comes with your tools. This is what you're gonna use to loosen and tighten your motor to put in your bits. So you're gonna to have to have these handy all the time. Have a pencil and you know some markers with you, that way you can mark any pieces of wood, if you need to put little markings on this, if you want to, you know, draw. So always have some, some pencils handy and ready to go. Next thing you're going to want to go by is go to Harbor Freight Tools or look on Amazon and you're going to want to find digital calipers. These are ridiculously important to get you a pair, a set, whatever you call it, of digital calipers. This is what you're going to use. Super important. This is what you're going to use to measure your thickness of wood that you use because every piece of wood is probably a little bit different. And you can see right here, this is 6.6 .6 millimeters. And yeah, so in your computer program, when you're doing your, what size is your material, your media, whatever you want to call it, you can go ahead and put 6.5, whatever, whatever it is, 6.47. So these calipers are ridiculously important. And the cool thing is they switch over to inches. So like if I wanted to go to inches, it would be a quarter inch. So this is a quarter inch piece of wood, but I like to go back and forth using millimeters and using the inches at the same time. So this is really inexpensive. I'll go try to find a inexpensive pair of these. I bought these at Harbor Freight. I think they were like 12 bucks, but I'll put a link in the description that you can purchase a set of calipers, digital calipers, and these automatically turn on and off. So that's really nice. So you don't have to like turn it off because they automatically do. The next thing that you're going to get is get you some blue tape. You're going to want super glue and you're going to want alcohol. Those are these three things. This is what I use. You can get other kind of glues and whatnot, or you don't use this. This acts as an accelerator for the glue to hold down the media. So what we'll do is I'm going to show you a quick example with this piece of wood. We're going to tape this down so that we don't have to use any clamps or anything like that. And I also have over here, you can see I got extra super glue, super glue, you know, just in case I run out of that. I have alcohol pads. Alcohol pads you work really well. Instead of spraying, uh, you can wipe down one side. But I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because this is how we're going to hold down the media. So let's go ahead and hold down a piece of media real quick. Let's get that done. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to tape this down to the waste board without using any of these clamps that are off here off to the side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your blue tape, you're gonna put a couple pieces of blue tape down like this, okay, okay. Big enough that it's over the size of the media. So you can actually see it's longer on this side and it's longer on this side of the piece of wood that we're taping down. Now, what I like to do is I like to figure out which is gonna be the front side that we're cutting. So how about like this? We like this. So now what I'm gonna do is take this piece, flip it over just like that. And now I'm gonna take more tape and put it, whoop. we're gonna put it right over the top and we're gonna kind of do the same thing. We're gonna to try to find and line up those two pieces of tape that we have already. And we're just going to put this over like that. Okay, so now, pretty simple. You could see we're good to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crazy glue and I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol. This is 90% rubbing alcohol, which is gonna act like an accelerator. So, what I like to do is put glue on the actual piece. Let's do this right here. A little bit, a little bit, okay. Get that out of there. Now we're gonna take a little bit of this and just lightly spray this down with rubbing alcohol. And you'll see, that's it, okay. Take this, 
put it nice and straight. I like to kind of move it around a little bit to get that glue to spread out. And then within a minute or two, your piece will be nice and stuck to the waste board. Yep, it's getting there. Okay, so put your cap on, put your cap on, and you're good to go. So now this is actually attached to that, but we can remove it without damaging the piece that you're actually going to be cutting with your router. You can buy like stuff like Starbond and other kind of accelerator crazy glues, but they are kind of expensive and it's just easier to just go get cheap glue, which I'd have over there and some rubbing alcohol and it acts like an accelerator just like anything else. So it'll save you a lot of money, save you a lot of time. All right guys, so now that we got everything set up, we got everything pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna turn on the Fox Alien Pro. It's good to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the bit all the way to the front corner of the piece. All right guys, so I use a program called Easel by Inventables. It's really awesome. I actually pay for the monthly service on this, which a lot of people don't recommend, but I really love it. And it's, it's kind of expensive. It's 24 bucks a month. And I'm not gonna use it forever, but for a new person like myself, this is the easiest way to get started. It's web-based. I can move my camera around. The only downfall is if your internet goes out, you will lose connection to your cu cutter. You have to have this completely hooked up with internet all the time um, while you're cutting your piece, but you can design anywhere and create stuff. It is super, super awesome. Basically, you could see right here, it's just it's just a really cool program. So what we're gonna do is just today, we're going to cut a Mickey head out of a little skinny piece of wood. And what's gonna be really quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up over here to my piece, okay? And then I'm gonna change my dimensions. I know that it's a five inch piece of wood by five inch piece of wood, and it's a quarter inch thick. Okay, so 0.25. Now you can come over here in this bottom corner, oops, right here, and I can change it. Okay, so it won't let me change it. So what I need to do is actually come to my piece and let's see. Let's see, that's the outside, that's the inside cut. My depth, my depth is, is a little bit too, so let's go to 1 8 inch. Okay, let's just go to one eighth inch, not even. Let's go to a less than an eighth of an inch, just a little bit. Okay, so now you can see right here, I changed the depth of my Mickey cut to literally a sixteenth of an inch, give or, give or take. I just wanted to just show you, so let's do that. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and we're going to change this to 0.25, okay? right there and we're good to go so now it's a five inch five inch 0.25 my bit is going to be a um let's see here we're going to be using an eighth one eighth inch bit okay unfortunately it's not going to cut a few things because of the size of the bit but you know what we're going to go ahead and just run with it just to show, I kind of want to change that. Let's change out the bit. Let's actually put a 16th inch bit in right now. That way we can get all the detail from this Mickey head. So what we're going to do is we're going to change out with one of these new bits. We're going to put in a 16th inch bit into the collet that's connected to the cutter. So we're gonna go ahead and take this bit out, which is an eighth inch bit, and we're going to go halfway right here. We'll do that one right there. Okay, we'll put this here. So this is gonna be a 16th inch bit. And the cool thing is actually magnetic. So when you put this up there, it's got a magnet to it. All right, now that we went ahead and we got our bit changed and everything's good to go, let's go ahead and go to our cut settings. And I'm just gonna leave all of this. We're not gonna get into any of this stuff right now. This is all of my cut settings. We're gonna leave that. We're gonna go ahead and start moving 
the machine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control the machine with this and then bring the camera over and show you what it's doing. So what I did was I used this control right here, and these are the intervals. This is how much distance it's gonna move. So I wanna make it even finer and barely move, then I will control it with this. Again, we'll go into more of that later on in another video, but right now we're just gonna show you how awesome this thing is and how easy it is to work. Okay, so you can see right now my starting point right there is on the bottom right corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my cutting process right now and uh, we're gonna get it going. Up here at this top button, we're gonna hit carve. I did confirm the thickness of the material right here. Okay, it is clamped down. Well, it's not really clamped down, it's glued down. Okay, I have my drill bit right there set, the one that I want. I confirm that. I have my position, I'm at work point zero. It's all the way at the bottom, at the far right co left corner, bottom left corner. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cr click on raise the bit, turn on the spindle, and then start carving. So raise the bit, turn on the spindle, and let's go ahead and start the carve. All right guys, so this thing is now done cutting and it is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around the camera and I'm gonna show you how to remove this uh, piece from the CNC cutter now that it's been taped and ready to peel off. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. So, but first what I'm gonna do is move this cutter out of the way. This thing is pretty awesome. What it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you right here, how did the job do? Did it cut good? Did it cut right? And I'm gonna put yes, cut savings were great, so let's save it. And then we're gonna move that. Then we're gonna come back over here and I'm gonna jog this thing out of the way. So what we'll do is I'm gonna set my, um, I'm gonna set my settings to one inch in intervals. So when I hit that button right there, Oop. Let's turn this back on. So we're gonna go ahead and move. It moves this out of the way. Now what you're gonna want is you're gonna want one of these tools right here. This is just a scraper. And this is the, the job for scraping and peeling up the two pieces together. Boom, and let's see, and boom, there we go. All right, 
So there's our Mickey head right here. Now this piece of wood probably wasn't the best to use only for the sheer fact that uh, it was plywood and it, it doesn't really do a great job. But let's see if we can take this over to the sander and clean it up a little bit. It looks like right here this edge might have gotten a little messed up. I don't know. I think if we sand this down, it should turn out pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, though, is let's remove this tape off the back of the piece. You can see right here, this is the two pieces that were glued together. And now we have a perfectly clean piece. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can sand, because check all this out. This is all pretty grungy. All right. All right, guys, so that is it. That is the CNC cutter, and this is the little Mickey head that we went ahead and cut, and it is pretty awesome. Check it out. It's got some really, really good details uh, that are, you know, pretty awesome. I think the smaller the blade, and the slower the cut, it, you know, you could do some really amazing stuff with this cutter. This literally, this little piece right here took, I think, about 24 minutes. Just this one little cutter took 24 minutes. Now, on another video, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the larger 30,000 RPM. That's a 12... I think it's either a 10 or a 12,000 RPM motor. And what I did was I went to Harbor Freight Tools and I purchased their Bauer router and that is 30,000 RPMs and it's gonna really, really do a lot faster, more powerful cut. Plus I can use larger bits and do a lot more larger projects. But this is this is it. This is the kind of stuff that you can make with that CNC router. It's pretty awesome. This was just a really quick, small, I really didn't even do any test cuts. This was a first cut. Uh, sanded it down. You can paint these. You can give them to kids. A lot of projects to do. There, it's it, the, the possibilities are endless. Make stuff to sell on Etsy. This is it. This is really cool. Again, this video is just touching the basics. Literally the basics of that machine and what you can do. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. It's definitely a little quick, short. Uh, well, it might not be quick. It might not be short, but uh, it's definitely a little bit different. We're going to be doing a lot more videos with the CNC and then you saw right next to it the laser engraver. We'll do more projects with that too. So if you like this video, go down below, hit the like button. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button, get notified of all of my newest videos. And until the next video, make sure I do one thing, stay awesome. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.